Number one says we know these things about a polynomial function. It has exactly one relative maximum and one relative minimum. So we've got one maximum and we've got one minimum. It has exactly three zeros. And it has a known factor of x minus 4. Sketch the graph using this given information. All right, so um, we know one of the zeros, okay, because it gives us a factor of x minus 4. So then if we solve that x minus 4 equals 0, we just add 4 to both sides, and we know that this crosses at positive 4. Then we just need um, to do one minimum, one maximum, and go through three other or two other points. So you really get to do kind of whatever you want here, right? So I'm just going to put another point here and another point here as my zeros, and then um, has one relative max and one relative min. So I'm just going to go up, I'm going to go down, and then I'm going to go back up because this is going to give me. The three zeros, I've got the relative max, I've got the relative min, and I for sure have that um, zero of x equals four. Number two, my graph's a polynomial function, f of x, and it has these three linear factors, but she makes a mistake. What was her mistake? Um, so we can see that hers goes through positive one positive 2 and positive 6 as her zeros, sorry, negative 1, positive 2, and positive 6. And if we set these factors equal to 0 and we solve for the 0, we would subtract 6, so we'd be getting negative 6 as a 0. Here we'd be subtracting 2, so we'd be getting negative 2 as a 0. And this one, we would be adding one, so we'd be getting positive one. So she forgot to do the opposites for the zeros, so opposite of those factors. Number three, here is the graph of a polynomial function with degree four. Select all statements um, that are true about the function. So the leading coefficient is positive. That's true because both of the ends are going up. So the, pos the leading coefficient is positive. The constant term is negative. Well, when we look at the constant term, it's where it crosses the y-axis, and we can see that that's above 0. So the constant term is definitely not negative. The constant term is positive. Um, it has two relative maximums. So it only has one maximum. So here's the maximum. So it does not have two. It has four linear um, factors. So this would match the number of zeros. So let's count one, two, three, four zeros. So it has four linear factors. One of the factors is x minus one. So remember if x minus one is a factor, then x equals one is a zero. Well, this one is at negative one. This one is at two. So this is false. One of the zeros is at x equals positive 2. Yes, it's crossing at 2. And then there is a relative maximum, um, or sorry, a relative minimum between x equals 1 and x equals 3. So let me draw a little box here at x equals 1 and x equals 3. So here's kind of the part of the graph where we see between x equals one and three. And so is there a relative um, minimum inside of that box? And there's not. And let me actually um, cover up kind of the rest of this so that you can see we're only looking in this chunk from one to three. And so then do we see a minimum in that little section of the graph between x equals one and three? And we don't, so this would be false. Number four, state the degree and the end behavior. So let's look for the highest degree term. So that's this negative 3x to the fifth. 
So the degree here is that exponent, which is five. And then when we want to do end behavior, then we want to look at the fact that that's an odd number and the leading coefficient um, is negative three. So the leading coefficient is negative. So odd meaning one up, one down. And then negative means it's going to start high and end low. So as um, X approaches larger and larger positive numbers, F of X is going to approach larger and larger negative numbers. When that leading coefficient is negative, they do opposite things. So then as X approaches larger and larger negative numbers, F of X is going to approach larger and larger positive numbers. So when that lead coefficient is negative with an odd, they do different things. And so remember, this means as X goes to the right side of our graph, so as our X's are getting bigger, positive, okay, then our Y's are getting bigger, negative, meaning that the graph is pointing down. So on the right side, it's pointing down. On the left side, the Y's are pointing up. So on this left side, the Y's are pointing up. Number five, this is the graph of G of X, which is X minus one squared times X plus two. Sorry, is this the graph of G of X or H of X? So G of X has X minus one squared and then X plus two. H of X has X minus one and then X plus two is squared. So we're looking at multiplicity of roots here. So this one has X minus one equals zero. So if we solve this, we have X equals one as a root with multiplicity two. Okay, and down here, we have this X plus two equals zero. So subtract two. So X equals negative two is a multiplicity of two. So remember when you have an even multiplicity, that means that your graph is just going to touch this number and go back up. It's not going to go through it. So we have one that just touches and goes back up at one. So this is the one with an even multiplicity. So this must be the graph of G of X. Since it has an even multiplicity at X equals one, and then it goes through at X equals negative two, meaning an odd multiplicity in this case that this is there one time. Number six, Kieran thinks he knows one of the linear factors of P of X. After finding that P of three equals zero, Kyron suspects that X minus three is a factor. So he sets up a diagram to check. Here's the diagram he made to check his reasoning, but he set it up incorrectly what went wrong. So if he does this where he plugs in three and he gets zero, he is correct, okay, that X equals three is a zero. So then he subtracted the three back over and figured out that this was a factor. So he did that right, but when he plugged it into the diagram, he missed the negative with the three. So he should have put in X minus three here, not X plus three. All right, then number seven says the polynomial function B of X is this, and it has a known factor of X plus two. Write it as a product of linear factors. So we're going to divide this factor in using this kind of box or diagram method, and then we're going to factor when we get down to um, the quadratic. So let's divide in X plus two. So put the X plus two here, and then we're gonna start with this X cubed part of the polynomial. So then we'll say X times X squared gives us X cubed, and then X squared times two is two X squared. So now this will help us find this term, okay, because we know it's gonna be a like term with this two X squared. So two X squared and this should give us eight X squared. So 2x squared and plus 6x squared. 
So then x times 6x will give me that 6x squared. And then we'll do 6x times 2 to get this box, which is 12x. Then we'll again um, be able to find the like term because this will be 12x with this one will give us 5x. So 12x minus 7x gives us um, the 5x. So then x times negative 7 gives us that negative 7x. Negative 7 times 2 gives us negative 14, which matches this. So we divided correctly. So now we've divided in um, an x plus 2 factor. And we've gotten down to the polynomial x squared plus 6x minus 7. So we need to factor that. And so the factors um, of this will be binomials. Okay, so we're going to divide down that trinomial. We know since the first number is a 1x squared that that's just going to be x times x. So now we're looking for the factors of negative 7 that add to 6. So we want one positive and one negative factor. Okay, so we're going to have a difference of 6. We want it to be positive 6. So we want it to be a negative 1 term. So plus 7 and negative 1 because that will multiply to negative 7 and it will add to the middle term of 6x. So here's our product of linear factors.